Welcome, dear friends, to a virtual tour of the Mount of Olives. The Mount of Olives is a place where history, prophecy, and faith come together in a timeless embrace. As we stand here together, we're hit with the realization that we are on holy ground, as this mountain is considered more important than any other mountain in the world to believers. And why is that? According to biblical prophecies, right here, we will welcome the Messiah who will come to reign in an eternal kingdom of peace. So, why are we beginning this tour in a seemingly unlikely place, a graveyard? Right here is the world's largest Jewish cemetery and also some of the most expensive real estate in the world. And why is that? While Christians believe that the place where Jesus will return is the Mount of Olives, many Jews believe that this is the very place where the Messiah will appear for the first time. And they want a front row seat. But this cemetery location is more than a burial place when we consider the importance of the Mount of Olives. As we look out from here, we consider that the Mount of Olives is where, according to the Gospels, Jesus comes from Jericho, followed by a crowd who were worked into a lather as they hoped he was the Messiah who would free them from the oppression of the Romans. But of course, we know that Jesus' mission was far more important than that. So here, from the Mount of Olives, Jesus sees Jerusalem. From around here, you are in the same area where Jesus would have been as he looked onto the holy city. And what an amazing view of this magnificent city and temple it must have been for anyone coming here 2,000 years ago. Although the temple was demolished by the Romans in 70 AD, what we see today is still quite impressive. Today on top of the Temple Mount, you can see the Dome of the Rock where Muslims believe that it's the place where Muhammad ascended to heaven, or so they say. But 2,000 years ago, Jesus saw something very different. There was no Dome of the Rock. Jesus saw the second Jewish temple in full glory, a 50-meter high building all in white, blazing in all of its stunning magnificence. Jesus' view was actually more like this Holy Land model of Jerusalem that's located at the Israel Museum. So where is the Mount of Olives? The Mount of Olives is nestled in the heart of East Jerusalem, just east of the Old City. Although most of the olive trees are now gone, it is believed that its name is derived from the lush olive groves that once graced its slopes. Although we are going to highlight the importance of the Mount of Olives during the Passion Week and Christ's Ascension and Triumphant Return, let's also go back, way back, to its Old Testament significance as well. In the pages of the Old Testament, the Mount of Olives emerges as a sacred sanctuary where the faithful sought solace and divine favor. It was here that King David climbed to the Mount of Olives in a moment of anguish, weeping as he fled from the rebellion of his son Absalom. Imagine King David as he stood on this mountain overlooking Jerusalem and in a state of complete loss over a son who wanted to overthrow him and even kill him. 2 Samuel 15.30 says, But David continued up the Mount of Olives, weeping as he went. His head was covered and he was barefoot. All the people with him covered their heads too and were weeping as they went up. The Mount of Olives also bears witness to the darkness of human hearts. For it was here that King Solomon erected altars to the child-sacrificing foreign gods of Moloch and Chemosh, 
leading the people away from the true God and bringing divine judgment upon the land. Yet despite its dark past, the Mount of Olives also stands as a reminder of God's intervention to rescue us. When God's people were enslaved in Babylon, God gave Ezekiel a vision of hope to share with his chosen people that the day of freedom is coming. The Mount of Olives is exalted as a place where the glory of the Lord stands, a beacon of God's divine presence. Therefore say, This is what the Sovereign Lord says, I will gather you from the nations and bring you back from the countries where you have been scattered, and I will give you back the land of Israel again. Then the cherubim with the wheels beside them spread their wings, and the glory of the God of Israel was above them. The glory of the Lord went up from within the city and stopped above the mountain east of it. In the book of Zechariah, it speaks of the end times, a day when the Lord will stand upon the Mount of Olives and the mountain will split in two, ushering in a new era of divine intervention and redemption. For believers, it is a promise of resurrection and renewal, a testament to God's faithfulness to His promises and His people. On that day, his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives, east of Jerusalem, and the Mount of Olives will be split in two from east to west, forming a great valley with half of the mountain moving north and half moving south. Now, let's focus on the importance of the Mount of Olives in the New Testament, as well as highlight some of the sites surrounding the area. As we journey through the New Testament, the Mount of Olives comes alive with the echoes of Jesus' teaching and miracles. For it was here amidst the olive trees and the rocky terrain that Jesus taught his disciples on the end times and offered words of comfort in the face of tribulation. And of course, we know the Mount of Olives played a significant role during the Passion Week of Jesus, during which several Old Testament messianic prophecies were fulfilled in this very place. But there is one more prophecy that still awaits fulfillment, and we will get to that. On Palm Sunday, we still celebrate the triumphant entry of Jesus as people wave palm branches. From Luke 19, we read, When he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. As we walk down from the top of the Mount of Olives, we are met with several churches that remind us of the Passion Week of Jesus. The first church we'll talk about is the one with the golden domes. This is a church of Mary Magdalene, a well-known Russian Orthodox church. This church is dedicated to Mary Magdalene, who is mentioned several times in the New Testament, but particularly for her presence at Jesus' crucifixion, and especially when she discovered Jesus' empty tomb. The next church we visit will be the church of Dominus Flavit. Dominus Flavit translates the Lord wept in Latin. The church was designed and constructed between 1953 and 1955. It was fashioned in the shape of a teardrop to symbolize the tears of Christ. For here we remember the gospel account of Jesus as he wept in great agony for what was about to befall Jerusalem. From Luke chapter 19. As he approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it and said, If you, even you, had only known on this day what would bring you peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. 
The days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment against you and encircle you and hem you in on every side. They will dash you to the ground, you and the children within your walls. They will not leave one stone on another because you did not recognize the time of God's coming to you. Continuing down this path, we come to the Garden of Gethsemane and the Church of All Nations, also known as the Basilica of the Agony, which recounts the extreme agony Jesus went through as he contemplated his crucifixion and where he was betrayed by Judas on the same Mount of Olives where his disciples had hailed Jesus as the Messiah just days earlier. But we'll cover more on the Garden of Gethsemane and the Church of All Nations in a future episode. The Mount of Olives reminds us of the great extremes of loss and of hope, of death and of new life. It is a place of great contrast, just like our own lives. So let's return to a panoramic view from the Mount of Olives, gazing upon the old city of Jerusalem. From here, we remember Jesus' ascension and final triumphant return. From right here on the Mount of Olives, Acts chapter 1 recounts that Jesus ascended to heaven in the presence of his disciples and then angels were sent to comfort them. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, who also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. So we also remember that the Mount of Olives will be the place of Jesus' return in his second coming as foretold in the book of Acts. This same mountain that witnessed his ascension to heaven now holds the promise of his glorious return. I pray that this virtual tour has deepened your understanding of the profound spiritual importance of the Mount of Olives. Would you please help us to spread the message of hope and faith in these episodes by liking, subscribing, and sharing this series? We would so appreciate that. Until our next episode of the Break Forth Virtual Holy Land Tour, May your hearts be touched and your spirits uplifted. Shalom, and until our next adventure.